To come now to our gospel reading, I would invite you to stand. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent, sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you gave, have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. Hear the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please have a seat. Just going to adjust this camera a little. And so we come to this first Sunday after the Ascension. It's an uh, in-between time. And one of the things I'd like us to explore this morning is the fact that the Christian faith is hard to understand. There are all sorts of things that are unusual. Uh, over the past weeks, we've heard in the evening prayer, as we've read through the, the book of Exodus, about the leading of God before his people as they journeyed out of Egypt. We have strange things such as Moses coming across a bush that is burning but not consumed by the fire. We've got this unusual event of the people being led through the Red Sea with this wall of water on either side. The ways in which God uh, led the people in the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. Uh, these are all unusual things. Within the Gospels we hear unusual things, things that are hard to understand, things that don't fit in with our experience and understanding of the world. Things such as Jesus raising up people who have died, giving sight to the blind, walking on water, feeding 5,000 people with a couple of loaves of, a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. These are all unusual things. And if that isn't enough, we then come to the crucifixion. The crucifixion we can understand readily enough. It was commonly practiced by the Romans. But that wasn't the end of Jesus. Over these past weeks, we have heard the various stories of the way in which Jesus was seen and experienced alive, that he wasn't dead. And by various means, Jesus demonstrates to the disciples this new reality, that yes, he was dead, but yes, he is alive. Now that, of course, doesn't gel with our normal experience of the world. It isn't scientific. But in this last week, we have come to 
the celebration of the Ascension. That time when we hear of Jesus being taken up from the earth and no longer being seen amongst the disciples. Uh, just behind me we have the Paschal candle which we had lit and had burnt here in the sanctuary over these past weeks since the evening of Easter and was extinguished on Thursday evening. But it's a reminder to us that Jesus is no longer with us in the way in which he had been. Uh, so to help us understand some of the passage that we've heard around the Ascension, uh, we're going to have a look at uh, a couple of maps to help us see where things are. And so, thanks Bart. Looks like we're not going to. No, we're technology. It doesn't always work the way you hope it will. Uh, can you imagine that we've got the old city of Jerusalem over here, uh, the Kidron Valley, and then on the other side, the Mount of Olives. And that was a place, oh, there we are. It's decided to work. Uh, so there we have, uh, highlighted in yellow, the sites of the Ascension. And the black line that you have running across there is one kilometre. Now that's significant because we hear in the readings that it was less than a Sabbath day's walk. And there's a, a map of Jerusalem as it is today. Uh, so down across the Kidron Valley, uh, up to the top of the Mount of Olives. And there uh, you will find this uh, very small and uh, fairly ordinary little courtyard and at the center of the, this tiny little chapel. And this is the place that commemorates uh, the place where Jesus was taken up to heaven, where he disappeared from their sight. And so uh, this is the place that is important in Christian teaching because it is the place that separates out Jesus' physical presence and opens the way to the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to people that unless I go away, the Holy Spirit cannot come to you. Now, the Holy Spirit had been around in Scripture for a long time. We had seen it at work uh, throughout the history of Israel, coming upon uh, people from time to time uh, for the purpose of uh, for the purpose of teaching the people uh, working through individuals but now as we look to Pentecost we look to a time when things are changed again and we'll explore more of that next Sunday but in this time uh, we need to put our thoughts around the fact that just because something is hard to understand, something that doesn't gel easily with our understanding, doesn't dismiss it from being true or reality. Take for instance, if you were to say to people in London in 1790 that there would be a time when people would be able to uh, get into a steel cylinder and fly across the sky to reach the other side of the world in less than a day, you would be called crazy. And yet that which was fanciful out of their experience is now an ordinary reality for people in the world today. It's a little reminder to us that the world is much bigger than our understanding, much bigger than our awareness. And while there may be much in the Christian faith that we find it hard to understand, 
it certainly doesn't remove it from the space of reality. Over the years of his ministry, Jesus continually challenged the disciples about their experience of the world and their experience of the kingdom of heaven. And a large part of what the Christian faith is about, about growing as a Christian, is coming to understand the character and nature of the kingdom of heaven and learning to live according to the ways of the kingdom rather than the ways of the world. For we are people not of the world, but of the kingdom of God, even though we are in the world. Now, in these days between the Ascension and Pentecost, the Church has for many years had particular prayers around Christian unity. And indeed, repeatedly, Jesus prayed that after he had departed, that those who put their faith and trust in him would be one, that there would be unity. And of course, we read Christian history, human history, and we see that the church certainly hasn't been one. We'll explore next week about the way in which the presence of the Holy Spirit helps us to keep a focus not on self, but on God, uh, the source of our unity. Today, as we celebrate God's great love for us, we celebrate and rejoice that there has been so much work done to bring the church together as one. In the last 60 or 70 years, the ecumenical movement has grown and we have seen so much of the church working together in the community and bringing good to the world. We pray that we will continue to grow in our commitment to the unity that is ours in Christ, that we may do, as Paul would say, dying to self and living to Christ. For it is only as we die to self that we come to open up our lives to Christ and his working in our lives. So we give thanks to God for his great love to us. We pray that as we prepare to celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost Sunday, that we may be better equipped to live out our faith in the world and to share with others, to listen to others as they struggle with their understanding of the Christian faith. May we be a people who are indeed disciples students learning and may we be a source of guidance and help to others in their struggle as they explore the Christian faith. Now to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion and power this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>